all over a few times. They do have 15 turnovers in this game, but they can come back in a hurry. Now they've got to get to the line, and those have to start going in. Ship, we know, is, a, is an excellent shooter. Got to take advantage of the opportunity at the free throw line. I want to remind you that uh, most of you, following our telecast, it'll be women's basketball out of the Big 12, number nine, Baylor at Kansas. But we got a lot of basketball to be played here. One out of two for Ship. Backcourt celebrating, Barry, as you said, it's 80th year. Being treated on its 80th birthday. And pretty good basketball. And game. no, you and I weren't at the No, opener. we were not doing that. <laughs> no, we can, we can honestly say that. Now, the Bruins need a couple of productive trips. They get the turnover. Oregon back in that matchup zone. There's a Flalo now, Bob Mote. Drop it down to a Flalo. A Flalo reverse. Don't go anywhere. No, it's only a six-point game timeout UCLA. I mean, you're talking two possessions. I mean, let me just say, there's a ton of time oh, yeah. left in this basketball game. And we mentioned earlier, UCLA had led last at eight to seven. Yeah, and here you see the Bruins. The Bruins, Barry, have had some chances. And uh, inexplicably, they, they made some errors in terms of their shots and their passes. But let's face it, I mean, it's a big game on the road. And Oregon has played wonderful basketball. And when, when the Bruins, uh, you know, they, they, they're still within striking distance. But they've lost the ball a few times right under the goal. So uh, UCLA with uh, 15 or, or, or 16 turnovers in the game. And they have just used what we're told is their final timeout. And there's a long way to go here. Now they'll get some timeouts, of course, because uh, I'm sure Ernie Kent will call a couple of timeouts. But... doesn't stop when you get a first down in this no that's today, right today right that's right <laughs> so now Oregon's got to find an answer they got to get this in and they just do look at the job by a flalo guarding a much smaller quicker player but it shows his defensive versatility his ability to get out on those guys and, and, and hold them down. Shows his quickness, too. Sure he, he hasn't allowed Porter to get around him at all. Hey, you got you to try to find Brooks now. And Porter's got the ball at the top. With eight on the shot clock, seven, six. Oh, oh. That time he had a good look. Oh, my goodness. The long run. <laughs> that, was, that was deep in the right corner. There's a Flalo in rhythm. Look out. As you said, UCLA no timeouts, but you don't need to take one here. I mean, even if you had one, still plenty of time, and Ernie Kent's going to try to make a readjustment. And the Bruins only three down with 2.42 to go. And a lot, a lot of Porter's teammates kind of looking askance at him for that last shot. And Brooks has gone a long way. He's gone eight minutes without a goal. And you were saying they got to start to look well, for him. Well, and Brooks didn't have the ball at the top. I, I think the adjustment by Ernie Kent's going to put Aaron Brooks at, at the point with the ball. And uh, Aflalo did not score in the first half, but he's come out the second half to, to put on a, a, a pretty good show. He's got 12 in the second half. And, you know, there's still plenty of time left. I said he might get 20 in the second half. That may be a stretch, but he, he might come close before it's over. Yeah. Well, we'll remind you that tonight our Pac-10 basketball double. He may get 20. He may get 20. He may get his 2-0 uh, his in the second half. And now you're going to see. Here's the adjustment. I think Brooks will handle the rock, especially as the shot clock winds up. Not a bad idea to give it to Loon either. Loon and Brooks is a good combo. Here's Brooks. Got 10 on the shot clock. Taylor takes a look at the clock, 8-7. Puts it on the floor, gets all the way into the paint. Can't get it to go, though. And a rebound is shipped. And here come the Bruins. Chance to cut it to one or tie. And the lob for Mata, too tall. They've missed three opportunities under the basket in the last couple of minutes. And they had a follow on the wing. Just didn't quite pick up Aaron a follow running that wing. May have been open. Look out here. Kick out this time. Now Odia. Had a good look, couldn't get it to go. And Mba Mute gives it up to Collison. Here come the Bruins again. Oregon not taking high percentage shots. Bruins with poise. You know, you're behind. Here's 
here's the guy you want with the ball. Well, look at that pass. What a great, great dish. Good finish. And I tell you, they have all kinds of trouble finishing down low. He's going to talk to Josh Ship. He may, he may tell Ship and Aflalo, just let it go if you're open. <laughs> Still a lot of time. 128 left. It's a three-point ball game. Marty Lunen, good free throw shooter, will go to the line. Yeah, Lunen, if, if, you're, if you're wondering, is a 73% free throw shoot well the fire alarm went off Barry yeah that's what good. did you do the fire Tom <laughs> could set the fire alarm and now I think they got it under control here okay, everybody, there it every, is. everybody's got to vacate the building <laughs> oh please <laughs> don't go there <laughs> the stranger things than that have happened oh, you know. I haven't experienced that one yet though okay <laughs> game so far in the year. Okay, but everybody's got to leave the fire alarm going off. I think they have it figured out now. Now the officials are going to talk. Don McAllister talking to the officials, there's Don. And Lehman converts. Making a four-point game. And now a five-point game. Yeah, not much, not much doubt in those two free throws. They're ship driving. Oh, they're going to get a charge again. Yeah, they did. Now, how many charges has Oregon taken in this game? To my recollection, three to four, all critical. And here's Luna. What more can this guy do? Marty Lunen, terrific at the offensive end, making big plays, and does it Nice job to step in the way. Now UCLA's in that press mode. They've got to get after him. You heard the crowd take up a chant, Marty, Marty, Marty. And if there's a tough team to press in the country, it's his Oregon team. I mean, you're playing with two point guards here in Porter and, and Brooks. It's tough to take the ball away from them. Now you run clock. I, I think now you really get a little conservative in UCLA. I mean, I mean, if you're Oregon, go ahead and run it all the way down. I take, I take the whole shot clock. We got 15 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, well, very close. It's Collison here. Quickness upon quickness. Of course, he comes from a quick family. Yes, he does. Both his mother and father, world-class sprinters. His mom, June, silver medalist in the Pan Am Games and the number 10 Florida year runner amongst women in the world at, at Adelphi University. Both he and his mom, New York, represented Guyana in the Olympic Games. And a steal. Still plenty of time. Plenty of time. Collison, three. Can't get one. I think he ahead. may have been fouled. I think he shot. was. They're going to get Brooks, and it'll put Collison at the line for three with 46.8 seconds remaining. And UCLA with another steal. I mean, they, they steal the ball at a prolific rate, and they can turn you over, and there Collison is fouled. And now you're putting an 80% free throw shooter at the strike. With for a three. chance, yeah, for three. It's going to be a two-point game if he can make all of these. No Not problem. First, no problem at all. Despite the lunacy going on behind him. Or in front of him, I should say. How, how would you like to shoot into that crowd? I mean, there's there's all kinds of guys waving. and it's not. Look, look at that. I'd like to shoot there. Get up to the line, just make three. Ooh, missed that one. I told you the crowd's worth five. Yeah. It, you know, it's disconcerting to say the least. Now, this is, this guy's the MVP in the Maui Classic. You know, he's one of the top guards in the country. It's got to bother you a little bit. 
Two out of three. And a three-point Oregon lead, 46.8 seconds remaining. And there's a press in the trap, and Lunin gets out oh, of it. Got Odia. Goes to Odia. And now they'll wait. Brooks, and incidentally, that was the fourth foul on Brooks a moment ago. Oh, Porter thought about that. Wow. Taylor wow. takes it, Ooh. doesn't get it. Quick shot, not the shot they yeah. wanted at all. Yeah, a little too quick. Well, Bruins can tie with a three. They can tie, Barry, they can tie with a three. How do you like it? You see how like Tied at 66. Did we say it would come to the last well, one? Well, I, I think you play for the last shot if you're Oregon. Got and Brooks going to pull the trigger. Got it off the window. So much for that. 13 seconds left. I, no timeouts. Two-point game. No, no, did they have a timeout? They, no, Oregon, Oregon took the timeout. Wow. I didn't think Ben Howland and the Bruins had a timeout left. Oregon took the timeout after the Brooks score. Well, you would think that you would play for the last shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, you know, Brooks has done everything else today. Why not? And still, the Bruins have a chance to win. Yeah, they have a chance to win. And here's Darren Collison. And it just Collison and Aflalo have really answered the bell in the second half. And, and I thought there a little bit of contact, but Brooks just kept right on going, and he drills it. Now the timeout was taken right after that shot by Ernie Kent, who, who can call the timeout from the bench. So now if you're UCLA, do you play for the win? Do you play for the tie? I think if you're the Bruins right now, you don't have to force a three. If a three presents itself and it's a flower ship or Collison, you take it. If not, you go ahead and, and look for the opportunity shot. Overtime, I'm sure I'm sure Ben Holland would take overtime. I mean, he's been behind the whole game. Now remember, USC came in here. They were behind most of the way. Wound up winning it by two. And Oregon... I'm sure somewhere tucked away in the back of their mind is that two-point loss on Thursday night. Well, we talked about the hype coming into this game. Two undefeated teams in the country with Clemson and UCLA in this game. Sometimes these games, you know, let's face it, they're not quite up to the up to everybody's expectation. Well, this one is. No question. This has been just a marvelous game. Another great game in the Pac-10 conference. And, both teams should be congratulated uh, on this one here. And the Bruins trying to escape. Plenty of time. Clock is not a factor. 13.9 seconds. So you know UCLA coming out of this timeout. It's going to be Collison with the ball. And Aflalo and Ship. Those are, those are the guys. Now they've got... Now Roll, they've got Roll is out well, that, that might give you a good clue shooter. That if Collison gets a penetration and kicks it out, you know, you wouldn't mind Roll, who has been shooting the ball extremely well in previous games. Not in this one, but he's out there to, to, to drill a three if he's open. He's 0 for 2 from beyond the arc in this game. So here we go. This is where they want the ball in the hands of Collison. Collison comes around the screen. Now a penetrate. Tried to back down. Here's Schiff. Three seconds. Schiff forced it. Not going to go. Or it. It's over. UCLA's undefeated streak is history. And the fans rush the floor. Man, you think, you think they won the NCAA championship. Just an unbelievable game at backcourt. How do you like it, Oregon? And UCLA, they, they, I think they were looking three, Barry, at the end. I think they were thinking three, couldn't get it down. I don't think there's any question about it. I think you got to give credit to Ernie Kent and his staff drawing up that defense at the end. They really never gave Ship any kind of a shot. Plus, they did not allow the penetration. Yeah, th th this goes down as one of the really great college basketball games teams just played superb basketball so you, you can't say enough for the Oregon Ducks they lost to USC and they come back to beat a previously undefeated UCLA team there's a lot long way to go in the league long way to go in the season but congratulations to Oregon this was just a terrific win for the Ducks. No, it really was. And, of course, it makes the Pac-10 Conference race now completely topsy-turvy with UCLA having lost today. They do get a split on the road, and that's what everybody tries to do. So that's a wrap for us from here at Hectic and Crazy Mac Court. For Dan Belwamini, I'm Barry Tompkins. Ducks win 68-66.